Hello and welcome to another episode of Rapidly Aging Technology. Today we have some exciting unboxery going on. So we have this first box here, this big guy on the bed. We have a second box too, this one. As you can tell, these are both fairly big boxes. And disclaimer, once again I'm not using the lavalier light mic because it's bloody hot up here. So I don't have really a shirt that has a nice... um. It's not buttoned up so I can't really attach that properly. And the window's open, so you're going to hear car noises most likely. So what are we unboxing today? Well, for my computer fan, uh, video fans, which is a majority of you, don't turn away. This has to do with the vintage, well I'm going to say vintage-ish cleaning equipment. Stay on the video. On my last video about polishing a Kirby using a Kirby attachment, one of the uh, commenters said something along the likes of, never thought I would watch a vacuum video before, but you know, here I am, I did it. Stick around, you might find something interesting. And for those of you who just like the idea of, you know, the mystery of the box and what's inside, stick around too for that. So, we're going to do the small box first and the big box. I'm going to talk about what I'm opening up, and why it's neat, right? This isn't just like some Dyson or some Dirt Devil, some Walmart vacuum. Uh, this is something rarer and more unusual. And to give you an example, imagine a pyramid. At the bottom, and this is the pyramid of exclusivity, so more or less rarity. At the bottom of the pyramid, the widest part, you're going to have the Walmart, Target, vacuum brands, the grocery store vacuums, the ones that you find in any store that has a vacuum cleaner. You got Dyson, you got Hoover's, you got Dirt Devils, you got Eureka, you got those ones on the bottom. You find those everywhere. Next step up, you have the vacuum shop vacuums. So if you go to a dedicated vacuum shop, you'll find some different brands. You'll find usually some of the brands from below, but you'll also find Royal, one of the um, brands that they've held on to a very old metal design you can get. Great vacuums. Uh, Recar and Simplicity. Uh, Mila from Germany. Sibo, which I think is also German. At least it's European. So those are a little, a little harder to get. You can get them probably online too, but this is about like, you know, where you can find them and, and how commonly you probably find them in a home. Next step up, and prices usually are going up along this scale too. Walmart vacuums, pretty cheap. Um, the nicer vacuums that are in vacuum shops, usually more expensive, but they're maybe better cleaning power, maybe better filtration, maybe more reliable, better build quality. These are things that happen. Above that, as we're getting pretty narrow, is the door-to-door -door vacuums. There are vacuums still sold exclusively door-to-door. -door. Those would be things like Kirby, Rainbow, uh, TriStar, uh, Filter Queen, these sorts of things, and some dead brands like uh, Silver King, um, Filter Magic Watermatic, um, Patriot's still around, Patriot. These are door to door vacuums. They usually have something that does make them quite special and therefore helps justify a higher price. Things like Kirby's are excellent cleaners, and they're big and they're made of metal. Um, and they have all these attachments that you can add on them. They're, they're very versatile, but they are heavy, and so you got to deal with that. Rainbow uses their water filtration. Um, Filter Queen uh, of these seems to be one of the less common ones, probably more common than Patriot, has a cone filtration system. So those are door to door, and they're still only sold door to door. And then today, we are at the peak. Um, the peak because it used to be door to door. And then, according to the owner who's of the company that still makes them, he said about 2004, they stopped selling door-to-door. -door. But I've seen a report of at least um, as late as 2007, someone claiming to have had a door-to-door -door salesman with this particular type of vacuum. And so, that might, so maybe the numbers are off somewhere. So maybe prior to 2010, these stopped being door-to-door -door and are available in one location, 
um, but online. So theoretically, if they become popular, they could become more common than the door-to-doors, but this is a door-to-door that's no longer being active, like aggressively pushed. It's, if you're in the know and know that you're looking for it, you can find it. So for that alone, I think it's very um, interesting. And stick around because it's an unusual looking vacuum and it has an interesting filtration system. So let's stick around. First, we're gonna open up the smaller box. All right, so this is shipped out of Texas. And for a proper unboxing, you need a knife. And my knife of choice is a dirt cheap, Chinese-made auto parts store knife that I've carried on me since going off to college. And I did actually carry it on campus, just in my pocket, nothing too crazy. And, uh, well, they never threw a fit. I mainly use it as a pencil sharpener, oddly enough. I was tired of normal pencil sharpeners. Uh, the cheap ones, they tend to stop working. So, there you go. So, I probably didn't... Yeah, you know, I'm doing this one-handed kind of awkwardly. Let's see if I got it enough. Oh, there we go. Sorry about the shaky cam. I think on the bigger box, I'm going to put this on the tripod. Uh, let me undo the tape a little bit more. All right, tape undone. And this is, I, I'm not, this is truly the first time I'm opening this thing up. So you're discovering it with me. The vacuum, as you can see, it's called a, the Fairfax, a touch of class. I have the owner's manual. So don't, don't go look it up um, quite yet because you're going to see it. So don't just go, I'm going to, pa don't pause the video and Google it. I see what you did there, Jeff. Yeah, no, I see you. I see what's in that other tab. You're looking it up. I also see what's in that other tab. You, you probably shouldn't be looking at that. Anyway, back here. Now look at this. There's an advertisement for some other cleaning things. That's interesting. So we have the center shaft of the extension wand, along with its cable, because it has a power head. We have a brush attachment. I'll be untaking all the plastic off of these. This one's nice and big. Ooh! And it's red. This one would be your hard floor attachment. It's got a metal plate and everything. I like that, and some agitation brushes there. We'll look at these, of course, more without um, their plastic on. We have a good old-fashioned horsehair brushing, a dusting brush. I also said brushing dust. And this one, so some have um, thicker amounts of horsehair. This one seems to have a thinner amount. Now, rather than just say, ah, look, the cheapness um, of this particular attachment, of course, you can get probably ones you prefer better, I think the lighter ones can allow some suction through a little more, and they can be more of a lighter, lighter, brisk brush rather than a firmer one for dusting. So I think that there's a certain amount of preference to it. Here, we have some extension wands. That seem to have survived more or less. Shipping always makes things dusty. We also have the old fashioned crevice tool. If someone tried to sell a vacuum today that actually had attachments and it didn't include this, I mean, there would be an uproar amongst vacuum people because for crying out loud, it's been on every vacuum for ages. Here is the centerpiece of the, well, let me take it out of the bag. This is the power head. And quite frankly, wow, that is solidly built. I was disappointed to find that the power heads were not all metal anymore. Actually, you can't find an, uh, um, an independent uh, all metal power head on the market, even for my own looking. This is the Wesselwerk, or Wesselwerk, or weasel work, EBK 360. It's a German-made powerhead, and it is actually an upgrade for this unit. 
I forgot to mention, and you might find this interesting, these vacuums are made to order, which means you have an excellent opportunity to ask for some customization. Which means, I got this um, as a specialty. Normally, it comes with a self-adjusting um, power head, more or less a one-size-fits-all. This has a height adjustment. And, and I'm on you know a soft surface, so I can't quite do it. What it does is it raises up and then raises back down as you cycle through the numbers. This is important for vacuum cleaning because if you have one that just kind of self-adjusts, it's kind of an imperfect solution. If you can adjust it more specifically to the height of your carpet to bear down just enough to create a seal and have good contact, but not enough to just overshove the brush in, you'll have a, a much better cleaning experience. And on the bottom, we have, of course, the, oh, these are nice kind of, these feel like a hard rubber wheel. This is the bar which goes up when it's adjusted. And then this is the roller brush with very stiff brushes, which is good. Um, you want, the thing that leads to cleaning is agitation, airflow, and suction plays a role, but airflow it seems to be the most important between that and agitation is good. What you're doing with the brush roll is not only are you sweeping up dust, you're also imparting energy into the carpet. You're vibrating it. And when you vibrate it, it causes the, dust, the dirt and dust particles to start to, to lose their grip. So even if this, these brushes aren't physically touching the specific chunk of dirt, the little particle in there, you're, impart, you're, you're causing vibration through the carpet, so they start to work themselves loose, and then the, the um, airflow pulls it into the vacuum. So firm bristles are much better at doing that than softer ones. This thing has some heft to it, and so I am not disappointed at all with that. I figured that a metal one would probably be a little heavier, but this is actually pretty hefty. I cannot complain. Final bit here is part of the floor cleaning attachment. This must be part of kind of a mopping attachment. Just cool. Can I undo the plastic? Oh, it's pretty well sealed in there. So we'll we'll open these things up later. So that's all that in that box. Alright, let's get this guy open. And then I'll get the other side here too. Alright, sorry about the interruption there. But I did not proceed without you folks. All right, so we got two boxes here, two boxes within boxes with handles. Let's pull up this guy. Ooh. Oh, well, these are interesting looking. This box has some retro designing on it, which I quite like. So we got the Fairfax World Class products in uh, North Profit Row, Forney, Texas. American made. So you know folks, even if you're not going to the fancy door-to-door -door vacuums or, the, or something like this, which is generally quite expensive, much more expensive than your average vacuum and uh, whatnot, there are some American made vacuums that are probably within your price range. Um, Simplicity and Ricard um, are some examples. Royal, Royal Metal Vacuums. I think some of their parts, they're kind of... They're being built in America, but some of the parts may be outsourced a little bit. Um, and because they're bought by a, a Chinese company, but they're still built here. I encourage you, whenever possible, to buy domestic products. Uh, help your, your country out. And if you live in another country, if you're German and you're watching this, you should, well, I'd love you to buy American products. Do that. Help us out. But also try to buy your own products rather than stuff, you know, the Chinese-made cheap stuff. You'll pay a little bit more, but frequently you'll be getting a better product. So, not 100% guarantee. All 
right, what do we have in here? So we have hose bit. You know what I think this is? I think that this looks like there's a bit of a squeegee here. This is part of the shampooer assembly. That's my guess. So we got that. And we have the base here. So we have a base, and this is just a this is just a cardboard ring, probably for packing and whatnot. Let's see what's under there. Oh, just some metal. So it's just a simple separator. This is very rubberized. It's got a complete rubber ring. And it's got these rubberized casters. And these casters are actually pretty dang smooth. So, in case you haven't guessed, this is what's called a cylinder vacuum or canister vacuum. U.S. we typically say canister. I think in the U.K. they say cylinder. Okay, let's take this tube out here. Nothing too crazy. We do have metal connections on here and it's got some you know dust from shipping that tends to happen rubber bit so it uses a I'm gonna call it a bayonet style hook there yeah that was wiping off real quick we have the end which also has a suction control which is handy and it has a bit of a clip there so that's the hose And I'm eager to see if this has, if that's just the hose for wet pickup, if that's a separate one for dry hiccup, pickup, you never can tell. All right, we got this tube, which has some hooks on it. Another one with some hooks. Interesting setup. We also have oh, the core of the shampoo unit, I'm going to guess, in an official Fairfax bag. That's interesting. And they used to be out of Carrollton, so this is an older bag, so it still mentions Carrollton on it, but it's been blacked out. Ah, so this is a, this is the proper shampoo head. So that other one must be used for um, squeegeeing and drying, while this one is for the kind of standard shooting in water and pulling it up. So that other one must be like for squeegeeing dry floors. We have a smaller version of the nozzle, used for probably handheld stuff. And we also have some accoutrements here, a hose with a trigger on it, to, for, and some other bits and bobbles, which the manual will explain. So we'll have to look at how to use the shampooer in the manual. That's one side, and then, oh, we have some Fairfax Super Clean formula. It's a dry based powder in a big old jug. Also have the water adapter. So this vacuum is capable of wet pickup. You insert this in the middle so when water is pulled in from the main hose rather than being sucked straight up into the engine, the motor, it hits this, falls down, and as it fills, this ball will move up. And if it gets too close to the, so the water level gets too high, the vacuum motor will eventually suck this, seal everything off, and you'll hear a change in the motor pitch course, and you'll shut it off and drain it. That's what this bit's for. And we have big old hose. So this I suspect that this um, shampoo system is like the rainbow, um, is it the Aquamaster? Um, the gist of it being is you actually connect it to your faucet, and that's why you have a big old liquid hose. And uh, you probably do hot water or warm water, and then it flows through a tank with the soap, um, and goes into the carpet and then it's sucked up. So you have a constant, rather than using big old tanks, you just have a a hose going to the sink. So that's how that one should work. All right, now we're into this guy. So this is probably going to be the big kahuna. And 
and I think we'll have to move some things around. All right, the bit we're all waiting for. And on top, we have a big old Fairfax bag. And my guess is that this is for putting all your cushions in and vacuuming them, you know, vacuum packing them down and then releasing them so they pull in fresh air. Um, you can actually get some, some smells out of um, cushions when they are, when you actually pull all the stagnant air out and let them pull something in, especially if you have some fresh scents around. So that's what this guy's probably to help out with. And then, another Fairfax bag. You probably notice that there's a lot of, um, a lot of the Fairfax um, coloring is red. And in fact, that one floor nozzle um, was red. That's because the Fairfax for a long time, red was their color. These current ones are black. So in this bag, we have example of what their bag, what the um, the HEPA bag looks like. So the traditional paper bags, um, I'd say they fold more and then would conform more to the canister when blown up. These are HEPA filter bags using um, a synthetic cloth material. Actually they're a decent size. Let's see if I can open this up here. They got a decent amount of storage in them, and they should provide good filtration. Now this system has a multi-level filtration system, which I'll get into. And here there's some spare filters of various kinds, um, which I have. All right, let's see if we can pull this machine out. All right, ooh. So this is a good thing to notice. This machine does give you two separate hoses, and this is the electrical hose. So this is the one you use when you're um, when you're actually uh, using the power nozzle or normal dry nozzles. If you're doing water pickup, they give you a separate hose, which is great because otherwise you get the, use this thing a bunch, and then get you know wet stuff in it. This is gonna have dirt caked in it, and you just nasty. You don't want that. It has a power um, the remote here, not the remote, it's the uh, the handle and it has a switch in there for turning the power nozzle on and off. It has a metal uh, attachment press down type thing and then we also have rubber and metal here and the pigtail to connect it to the machine to, power, to provide power to the nozzle. It is recommended that each year or so you take some sort of um, plastic or vinyl protectant, like like Armor All wipes or something, and wipe these down and keep them clean. So say it's the manufacturer at least. Let's pull this out. Here we have it's taken apart. We have some extra ad adapters for attaching the bag to the in inside of the canister in case something ever gets lost. And we also have the charcoal filter, well, the, the filter that holds the scent sponge and the charcoal filters that flips onto the back of the machine. So that's in here. And then, here we go. Here's the thing we all came for. The machine itself. Let's take a good look at it. So here we have it. The machine itself. It has a rubberized and actually this is a metal handle with a rubber grip. A big classic chrome dome, chrome dome, big heavy power switch, a rubberized emblem, we have the pigtail power, and going down we have the Fairfax logo, and this this has definitely been updated. Over time this does change. We have the adapter port here and of course I put it on the base which is rubberized, very rubberized, very high quality machine. Just look at that. Just look how, this looks very old fashioned. And I'll tell you why. This has its roots, as far as I can tell, 
in the old McAllister bagless system, which was patented in the 1940s. And the McAllister bagless um, eventually became the Convac, which looked pretty much identical. And then I believe in the 60s came the Fairfax, which it did change up some things. And over time, its filtration has been improved too. So we're going to look at that. And of course, we'll fire up the machine just once to get a listen. And in a future video, I'm going to be doing um, benchmarks, vacuum benchmarks. So, yeah, you know, computer benchmarks, right? Well, how about a vacuum benchmark? And this cord, this is very thick cord. It's three prong, and there's 50 feet of the, the stuff. This, that's handy. That's very handy. Another thing, remember how I mentioned this was a custom machine? And some of you vacuum people are probably like, oh, yeah, great, you got a, you got a, a custom, uh, you just got a, a, you know, Wesselwork, a better Wesselwork power head, you know, great. This has an upgraded motor. Before you on the screen, I'm going to try to put the standard motor specifications, which look just fine. However, he, the, the, when I was talking to the owner of the company, he mentioned that, you know, they had, you know, a, a more powerful motor that they could put in there, but... With the, the power head, it seemed like it would suck it down to the ground too much, and it actually, it, you know, it minimized um, the, the performance benefit. Well, I, here's the specifications of that motor. I requested that motor, and I requested a power head that is manually adjusted, so that even if the vacuum motor was too powerful for the, you know, self-adjusting one size fits all nozzle, it won't be too much for that that thing is going to be at the height you set it and it's going to keep working. This has a more powerful motor so you should see on the screen um, the specifications differences. Now they're not the set the a more advanced motor has a more detailed sheet than the standard one but you should be able to draw some conclusions. So I think that's pretty interesting. Now let's look at the filtration system on this because this has a five stage filtration system. So I put on the rear filter which is, looks like a big muffler thing, which has a carbon disc in it, and a sponge where you can put on scents, so put on your favorite essential oil or whatever, so that when you're cleaning, the air gets, you know, those odors get removed by the charcoal, and then the fresh scent you prefer gets um, picked up from the sponge and blown out, so that's fun. That's the final stage of filtration, mainly to do with odors and smell. On each side of the canister are these big old clips that hold everything together and seal together the rubber seal from the top motor unit, which has that custom motor, so I really have a truly have a one-of-a-kind vacuum here, from the container unit. And what you do is you pull those up, and look, they have the Fairfax logo on there too. So that side is done. And we'll do that side. So now the unit should more or less lift off. Here we go. So let's look at the bottom side of filtration. So up here we have a cellulose disc. Now this cellulose disc originates likely from the earliest days of the McAllister bagless, when this was the primary form of filter without a bag. Um, kind of surprising, but that's how they did it. And in fact, Silver King and Watermatic also had similar filtration systems. Filter, uh, water Matic ended up um, adding, you know, improving the filter and going to a um, another filter after it. Silver King kept this sort of thing, eventually moving to a cloth filter, but a one-stage disc cloth filter. When this is your only filter, especially when it's a paper, um, it'll tend to clog quickly, so you have to change them frequently. So that's not, if this is your only filter, that's not ideal. But this is only stage two. This is the second stage filtration, which is nice to have. Stage one is, of course, the bag. And bagged machines, contrary to what Dyson would have you believe, um, do filter very well when they have a good filter system. So stage one, the bag. If the bag is good. That helps everything else. In here, you will have the bucket which has a coating on the inside, which is a little weak in a, in a couple places here. So that's not ideal. But 
otherwise is in good shape. And that, uh, this will be directly in contact with dirt only when you're doing water pickup. So I have this big old filter bag, which of course the hose connects in there. So that's good. Now, so that's stage one. Paper, disc is stage two. Okay, so that's not going to let very much dirt through. I said there is five stages. Well, where are the other two? On the underside of the power unit is this washable cloth filter. This is the third stage. And this is real nice, and this should stop more things. And then after this filter, stage four, is the pre-motor filter, which is a very fine, soft, I believe, electrostatic filter. So all these, so there's four stages before you get to the motor. Which, that is excellent. More stages, the better. And this holds it all in very nicely. So, and then stage five is more for sense, but might catch a few particles too. A lot of motors in canister machines are um, flow through motors. And I'm gonna have a chart up in front of you. That means that all the air pulled through the machine also goes through the motor housing itself. So past its fan, past the, um, uh, the, the, all the copper coils, the carbon brushes, all that air flows past and cools the motor. If that air is dirty, so it, the filtration fails, all that dirt ends up going through your motor. Um, if the filtration just doesn't do a very good job, whatever's left over will go through the motor. This machine doesn't use that. You notice it has an exhaust port, a single exhaust port. And it's out the back, it's not up the top. The motor is a bypass motor, which means that the motor guts have their own cooling fan and they're separate from the fans causing the airflow and suction. Which means that if you're doing, well, things like water pickup, it's more protected. Um, if there is some sort of filter failure, the motor is going to be in better shape. It's, it, it makes it a more resistant motor to break down from dirt because it shouldn't be touching the air at all so for some reason all these you know so let's say the bag were to burst and then someone didn't use this filter and the cloth filter is couldn't stop you know the dirt coming through the motor would be far better off than say something like a filter queen which uses a pass-through motor now i'm sure there are pluses and minuses to both kind of motor you know that's that's um, th that's obvious, I think. But I think bypass is um, a, kind of a better design if you can manage it, if you can fit it into your machine. But I think they tend to be a little noisier because they do have their own cooling fan. So let's get this back together. We'll turn it on once and I will let you go. The next time we'll be doing benchmarks. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this so far. I think this is a really neat thing. It's just so retro. And with that po more powerful motor, I believe it should perform very well. All right, maiden voyage, here we go. Smoke test. Let's have that rundown. That is a very well, that, that's a powerful motor. All right, the next time we talk about this machine, we'll be trying to use it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that. And I will talk to you later. And yes, there will be more computer stuff. Calm down.